Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. You have to uh, accept, accept the uh, the participants. Ah, because um, you are now the host. Yes, I will be here for the next uh, 10 minutes, but uh, after that... Uh, so I, I, I press the admit that says admit to each one of them. Yeah, no. Yeah. Admit all. Admit, admit all. all. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, we will wait for another like five minutes or so to give some people to give people the time.
Okay, uh, I guess you can only hear me. I think we can start the session and the people can jump in later, maybe. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. This is our third uh, session with uh, Online Youth Academy for Social Impact, Activity 1, the deck. Uh, most of you have... Uh, heard about the project, so I won't uh, deep into much detail. Um, so for today's presentation, we have um, actually some common issues that in previous sessions, I would say that uh, you have been asking about them. I mean, maybe not to the people who are here right now, but in general. Um, so today we're more into rights online and consumer awareness. Uh, as we have said again, uh, from ITML, there's a different trainer each week uh, for each different topic. So today we have Mr. Pavlos Kamagis. Uh, thank you very much, Pablo, for being here with us. Thank you as well. And he will uh, now take over the presentation with a small introduction of himself and what he's doing. And after that, uh, he will dive into some more details about the topic. So, Thank you, Ma thank you Maria. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Pablo Georgios Kamagis. Uh, I'm... Uh, I graduated law from European University of Cyprus. Uh, I came then to Greece and um, was actively a lawyer. I then got my master's degrees from the International Hellenic University. And at the moment I'm doing my PhD thesis on International Hellenic University. Uh, today I'm going to give you the basic uh, concepts about uh, consumer protection. And uh, I will try to um, make it as simple as I can in this time we have to understand the right and responsibilities uh, each consumer uh, has. Um, so um, I think um, all the PowerPoints, all the notes are on the Google Classroom, if you want to see them as well. Uh, what I will try here to do today uh, is uh, first, because I don't want to just be law, I will give you the basic structure and um, notes so you can understand the concept. And then with some uh, theoretical questions that if you want to answer as well, you can. Uh, I will try to make it more understandable for you uh, what you can do actually when you buy a product, when you are a consumer and when you're not. And if we have time after that, we can see some new innovations of the latest uh, regulations from the European nation. So, give me a second. So, uh, the latest um, um, European regulation um, changed a lot of things, especially in the internet section. But uh, to understand all this, first we have to understand the basic contents, contents and definitions. So, we have to see the four people that uh, we care about. It's the consumer, it's the supplier, it's the seller and it's the producer. So who is the consumer? Consumer is always a natural person. So basically not a company uh, who acts for 
other reasons than those that fall within his commercial, business, craft, or independent professional activity. So you have to do an action as a natural person that has nothing to do with your business, not usually. A supplier is a natural or legal person, so it can be a company. And we don't care if it's governed by, the comp by a private company or by uh, the public sector. And uh, for he's doing that, um, the supplying for his commercial, for his business or his professional activities. This is usually the companies that give you the product that you order. So I can be more, um, more easy to understand. The seller, is again any natural or legal person that again it's governed. Give me a second. It's governed either by the public or the private, and uh, he does that again for his personal professional activity. And the producer is the manufacturer of a consumer good. Uh, we specifically more targeted in the European nation at the moment, and not so much globally because the the recent laws are then regulations uh, are different if we came out of the EU. And is any person which presents itself as a producer by placing his name on the product. So this is the four uh, basic things we have to understand. Consumer is a natural person. You have to, to, to be sure about that. And when you buy a product, you have to be sure it's not for your company. It's not so you can get rich or do a business. All the others can be either natural or legal, and they do it for their businesses. It's a sum up, so you can understand it more easily. And after that, one uh, huge um, theoretical uh, thing we have to analyze is in uh, consumer productions, we have two times, two types of contracts. We have sale contracts and we have service contracts. Sales contracts is any contract under which the supplier transfers or undertakes to transfer ownership of goods to the consumer. And the consumer pays or undertakes to pay the price, as well as any contract which has as its object the provision of goods and services at the same time. On the other hand, service contracts are any contract other than a contract of sale. So any contract, so, so you can easily understand it, is if a contract isn't a sale, it's a service. And um, when you say sale, we say goods. What we sell usually is goods. For example, we sell water, some company. We can sell natural gas. We can sell electrical energy. And these are goods and we can sell them as long as they are in certain quantity. If the quantity is too big, it stops to be a consumer product and then it becomes regulated by the government. So the latest regulation that each and any, any one of you can check if you want to see more about the law is the 2019 EK, it's on consumer rights, that's the regulation. And the one in Greece for anyone interested is the 4,933 of 2022. These are the laws that govern us today regarding consumer protection. And puts all the guidelines. So now we have the basic concepts of how, who is the consumer, who is the producer, who is seller. So now we will focus uh, on what happening today usually, distance contracts. Distance, what is distance contracts? Because in sales, you don't always go to the, to the shop and buy the thing. You usually uh, just uh, take it from the internet. So we have to understand that this, the different concepts of distance contract and out of shop contracts. So it would be more easily understandable to you. So a distance contract is by definition, any contract first that is conclu concluded between the supplier and the consumer. Ara, we always need a supplier or and we always need a consumer. Uh, in the text of an organized distance selling or service provision system, Okay, this is understandable. But without the simultaneous physical presence of the supplier and the consumer. So to have a distance contract, we have to have a supplier and consumer that are not simultaneously physical presence in a shop, for example, 
and by exclusive use on one of these means of distant communication, for example, telephone, email, internet. So supplier, consumer, not physical presence, email, internet, telephone, and you have to conclude the contract while be in distance. If you come to the shop then and finalize the deal, you don't have a distance contract. We have a contract, a different type of contract with different consequences. So this is out of distance. Now we have out of store contracts. What is out of store contracts? So any contract between the supplier and the consumer, which fulfills the following conditions. So again, it's concluded with the simultaneous physical presence of the supplier and the consumer in a place where they are not the supplier's commercial store. This is the difference. For example, in the distance contract, we said that they don't, they must not have simultaneously physical presence. In an out-of-store contract, you have to have simultaneous pre presence, but not in the supplier's commercial store. You have to be in an outside space. Let's say he found you somewhere else and you bought something from him. This is an out-of-store contract. So this is concluded again by following an offer from the consumer under the same conditions as we analyzed in the distance contract. Uh, uh, moreover, is concluded at the supplier's commercial store or using any means of remote communication immediately after personal and individual contracts with the consumer in a place that is not the supplier's commercial store, like we said before and is entered into during an excursion organized by the supplier with the purpose of or effect of advertising and selling goods or providing services to the consumer. It's like I tell you, someone finds you outside of their store, you have um, an agreement about buying a product, you finish buying the product outside of the store, or you have agreed it all right outside the store and you go to the store just to pick it up. And the difference between distance contract is that distance contract does must not have simultaneously physical presence. This is very crucial because we have different laws protecting its thing. Now, uh, in any case, when you sign either one of these contracts, so a contract on the shop, a contract outside of the shop, and a contract on distance, consumer can cancel distance of premises purchase without needing to give a reason only for outside of the shop. Okay, for the two reasons we just said, within 14 calendar days of receipt of the project. If the supplier fails to inform, okay, um, the consumer of his right of cancellation, the cancellation deadline expires 12 months after the initial expiry. So each time you buy a product, the um, seller, um, the supplier, uh, have to inform you that, because not in all cases you have the right to um, cancel uh, a persuade, but in most of the cases you have um, um, a time period of 14 calendar days uh, to cancel your um, order without giving any reason. You just don't feel like buying it anymore. So the supplier has to inform you that you have 14 days to do that or this product uh, does not include the cancellation. If he does not do that, the, 12, the 14 days becomes 12 months. And in these 12 months, for example, let's say after five months, he remembered, oh, I didn't um, inform Maria about the cancellation. Uh, and he informed you after five months, after the exact, exact day, he informed you that must be proven by a, an email or um, a paper. Um, you have 14 days from then to do your cancellation. So an example, because I told you not every product has cancellation, some cancellations rights are not applied to sealed audio recordings or sealed video recordings or sealed computer software. If you buy software for your mobile phone or for your computer and you didn't like it, you can't uh, cancel it. It's one of the things that the law has defined because if you open a product like that, it loses all his value. So if you just don't want it anymore and you return it, the, the, the producer and the supplier can do anything with that. So to be protected from both sides, 
still computer software or audio recording and some other stuff we will see later on cannot be canceled. Uh, also, uh, the cancel uh, deadline and um, products uh, that do not apply to products that cost less than 30 euros. Okay, if it costs less than 30 euros, you don't have that right to do the 14 days. So, okay, yes. Now, we will see the store now contract. We will see some basic stuff. And after that, I will give you some questions. So these things can be more easily understandable because if you're just talking about them, you won't understand. And then I want after you live here to have a concept what you can do in your own life about consumers. So we said distant contracts. We said out of store contracts. And now we have store contracts. Store contracts is what is a store? So we have to define what something is a store. Any uh, hello, improbable. sorry for interrupting. I have a question. Hello, hello, yes. Uh, I'm Chris. Good morning to all. Uh, my question Hello. is this: um, We talked. Uh, you talked uh, earlier about. I, do, I think you uh, asked the question. Or yes, yes. Uh, I have okay. asked the question. I just uh, raised my hand. If a question, uh, this is the, the one you wrote on the chat, or is it a different one? No, oh, no, no. A different ah, one. Okay. okay, I will uh, ask uh, that uh, question uh, later. Tell, tell, tell me yours. Okay. Uh, now, when I buy something in the shop, there is a quote. Uh, your voice is a bit um, lagging. Tell me the, it again. Yes. When uh, someone buys something from the net, they have to pick a box that says, I have read the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then usually the text, uh, the customer about Right. Uh, I don't know why, because I, I have um, I have some echo. Can you write the question so I can um, answer it to you? Because I have problem hearing. I don't know. It's like a microphone is, and I can't hear it very well. I, I yes. lose you from time to time. Uh, do you hear me now? Because I disconnected. Yeah, my, yeah. I think it's better now. Yeah. Headset, yes. So uh, when uh, I buy something from the internet, uh, I have to take a box that says I have read the terms of uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, there in the text, they inform the customer about the, the guarantees and the 40, 14 days that they have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that count uh, as informing them? Because many customers, including me sometimes, don't have the time uh, nor the um, motive, may I say, yeah, to I read all of, the, yeah. all of the text because it is uh, uh, legalese, uh, <laughs> if I can say that. It is a bit difficult to understand sometimes. Does that count as informing them? So basically, in the internet, there is a big problem. Like you said, there are two things about the internet that we have to understand. First, if you, when you take the order, you have to be sure that when you press the button, you pay something, and the consumer has to, be, has to understand that. OK, this is number one. Because a lot of consumers press the button, and they don't understand the transaction is happening. So when the transaction is happening online, first of all, you have to say it, say it that you pay here, you, uh, you your money. It doesn't matter if before you put your credit card or anything like that. When the button you press it and you have to pay, uh, they have to legally write. So about the question you made, um, it depends. Um, for example, usually what they do is they, they say to you, you have to agree, like you said, in a box with all the details. If the details they include are not like 10, 20, 30 pages that you have to all, all of them um, read them to understand it. And it's just one page and you have to read that one page, click it and to understand it. I know you don't have time, but if it's one or two pages, it's okay for them to do that. Because you know they say to you, if you want to do that sale, you have to read that. But that thing is not supposed to be because some companies do like that. They put all the law inside. They put sixty pages, and uh, this is not this is not legal. If you if you put sixty pages and you expect the customer to to read it, it's not going to happen. But a lot of companies, especially big ones, uh, they summarize it to fewer pages. Each country has different limits. I don't remember for each country, but if you summarize it and can be easily understand uh, in a concept of internet um, 
buying a product. So one page, two pages, three pages, four pages, something like that. So it's okay then. But uh, if it's more pages, then it's not okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah, you covered my okay. question. Thank you. Um, also, I think we had another question. Wait a minute. If a company buys a product from, for its employees, it orders the internet service. What is this then? Like I said, to be a consumer, you have to buy a product as a physical person, as a natural person, for your own good. If, as a company, or if, as a legal person, you buy something for your job, it's not, you're not consumer. It's a different law. Or to be in consumer, because let me show you have understand, to understand that. Everything that is under consumer protection benefits the consumer. The consumer is the weak person here, so the law wants to protect him. If you are a consumer, you have more rights. You have the right to cancellation. You have the right to be in a law. You have the right to get more money from some objects. But if you are a company, you don't have these rights. You, you make a transaction for your company. And the corresponding law, will the, law, the legal law, uh, the contract usually, will define what happens there. But this is not a consumer protection case. OK, I think. Okay, nice. Uh, let me see what. We, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, and uh, we need anything else? No, sorry. Uh, it just turned off uh, on by mistake. <laughs> ah, no problem, no problem. Uh, so we have uh, the store here. So we said distant. We said off store, and we have, so now we say in store. So we can have some examples later on if you can understand them better. So store, when something is a store, and you think it's pretty easy, but it's not always like that. Uh, any immovable retail premises where the supplier carries out its activity on a permanent basis or any mobile retail premises where the supplier carries out its business on a regular basis. Example, a shop, a market stall, a truck that is always in the same place, street market stalls that are always in the same place. For example, if they serve a permanent or usual training place, like if you always see that truck serving food in that specific area, this is a store. If you buy something from there, it's not an out of store contract, it's on store, okay? It's very important. Also, um, if they serve as permanent or usual trading place, we tell that, yes, yeah, sell play areas on a seasonal basis. For example, during the tourist season or a ski resort. Again, if someone always on the summer has um, a, a candy there, this is a shop. On the other hand, if something is very extreme or, you know, they did a fair once in every two years and you have a store there, this is not a store. Let me analyze it better. Areas to which the public has access, such as streets, shopping centers, beaches, sport facilities, and public transport, which the trader uses especially for his, for his professional activities, Second. as well as private residence or workplaces, are not considered commercial establishments. If someone comes to your job and sells you a book, you don't buy it in store, okay. If someone comes uh, to the beach and sells something for you to eat, it's not from a store, it's an out of store buy. And why I say that, like we said before, some products we buy out of store have the 14 day cancellation. The product we buy in store does not include a 14 day cancellation without any reason. So if you buy something from the internet, or if you buy something from distance, you have a 14 day cancellation for matter what. If you don't like the product, if the product is, you, you decided to, today you want uh, curtains and to, uh, tomorrow you don't want them. You just return them. And no one can say to you, you bought them. But if you buy them from the store, then you can do that. You can change them only for reasons uh, like it's manufactured or, um, 
it became destroyed for not your reason. We will analyze them later on, but you have to understand that. The 14 day cancellation without any reason is very crucial, is only for out of store. Out of store. Okay. And before I go to some examples, yes. Uh, also, to all of this, before we understand them more, so we told who are the consumers, who are the producer, we told where all these acts happen. And now we will talk about statutory guarantee or legal guarantee. So each, pro each product from law, from the regulation of the European nation has a guarantee. This guarantee usually is two years, at least. No one can say to you that it's less than that, but countries from all over Europe can put it higher. So for example, there, must be the, there can be a country that says that the, the minimum legal guarantee is three years. The minimum here, for example, in Greece, is two years. So what is a legal guarantee? Legal guarantee means the seller obligation to deliver goods that um, conform with the contract, goods that are deemed to conform with the contract if they are delivered without any defects. Like we said earlier, on, defects. The idea, what defect? It, it either um, subjective requirements or objective requirements, something you either could have wanted it to have or something that it should have had, okay? So if the fridge was supposed to, for example, freeze the products to minus 20 and the fridge uh, freeze the products to minus five, this is a reason, for example, for you to ask for another product or to ask for a repair or to ask to change the product or to ask for your money back. This is usually the reasons. You either ask for it to be repaired, you either ask for it uh, to give you a new one, or you either ask to get your money back. If some of the reasons the law describes in contracts um, does not apply to your product and have, don't have all um, the things that was supposed to have, then you can ask these three things. Okay, so what is important here? This, this is very important, especially in store um, pursuits. Any lack on conformity that becomes apparent within one year, one year of the date on which the goods were delivered is presumed to have existed at the time the goods were delivered, unless this presumption is incompatible with the nature of the goods or with the nature of the defect. After that, and until the expiry of the legal guarantee, the burden of proof with regard to whenever the goods are defective lies with the buyer. What this thing said to us, that if you buy a product, especially from a store, from everywhere, but especially from the store, within one year, if your product has a problem, if your product manufactured, if your product got destroyed in logical sense, not, let me finish and I will explain it, uh, then the, the producer or, or not the producer, the supplier uh, has to fix it for you, has to give you a new one within one year. So the legal guarantee is two years. For two years, if your product, ha something happens to it, the supplier has to fix it for you. In the first year, you don't have to prove that the product was manufactured or was um, flawed from the beginning. All this has to do with the supplier. So if, for example, the supplier thinks that you spilled a huge cup of coffee on your computer, he has to prove it. And not that your computer was flawed by the beginning. After one year, you have to prove it. So it's a legal guarantee, but in the first year, you are the beneficiary. And the, the second year, you have to prove it. And not only do we have legal guarantee, but uh, we also have the, um, give me a second, to, so I can put the questions as well. Uh, we have the commercial guarantee. Okay, what is the difference between a commercial and a legal guarantee someone could say? So, let's say again for the legal guarantee. A legal guarantee is defined as the sales responsibility if the product, when delivered to the consumer, is defective or does not meet its characteristics, okay? As described by the seller. 
The statutory warranty period for new and used product is two years. Now, for used products, uh, it depends on countries, it's not always two years. Usually it's one year, one year less, it's not um, defined, but for new products, it's two years, okay? On the other hand, commercial guarantee is optionally provided, optionally provided by the seller or manufacturer in addition to the statutory guarantee. That concerns product repair or replacement or refund in accordance with the terms of the compensation guarantee. And now, depending on the country or depending on the company, this commercial guarantee can come without charge to the consumer or with charge to the consumer. Usually in Greece, for example, where I am, they usually charge the consumer. They say to you that if you want to expand your legal guarantee to five years, for example, you pay this 100 euros, depending on the product, and you have an extra commercial guarantee. So the commercial guarantee is given to you by the seller, the manufacturer, or a third party who guarantees about the product. Okay. Usually it's it's two more years, maybe three. It's little, from two years that you have the legal one go to four to five, something like that. And uh, the guarantee must be um, in writing or in another durable medium, the law says, available and accessible to the consumer. What that means, usually it's either on paper or it's either on e email. You have to have the guarantee. And the same, the legal one, if you don't have it, as long as you prove you bought the product, it's okay. But for the commercial one, uh, don't throw it away if you take it. Uh, be sure to always have the paper. And be sure always to have the, the receipts of anything you, you, you have, because these things help you prove the time and help you, or most of the times, do your job. Okay. Uh, when I say your job, no, I mean uh, to, to take all the rights as a consumer, because if you lose your rights as a consumer, then things are very difficult. Okay, so this is the basic, basic, basic stuff about consumer protections, consumer protection. So we know who does include consumer protection. Where do we are consumers in distant or in the store or out of store? And now I will try to make you some, I will make some questions. You don't have to answer. If someone wants to answer, uh, you can answer. Uh, so you can have a more um, a bigger understanding of how things actually work. Okay. So for example, we said earlier on, um, this is more difficult questions. I will tell you, I will ask when, if someone wants to answer. For example, there is a question here from a lot of consumers. If the product is defective, who is responsible for the repair? Am I responsible? Is the producer uh, responsible? Is the seller responsible? Who is responsible? So the seller is responsible for resolving the matter. The one who bears the responsibility if the product upon delivery is defective or does not meet its characteristics. In case of an online transaction through a platform, it may be agreed that the platform is the intermediary and not the seller of the products. So the terms and conditions of the transaction must be checked. What does it mean that if this is not an online payment, you can see who, for example, a big market, they give you the, the guarantee, they repair it, no, as long as in on the two years, okay? And you don't pay anything for it. But if it's an online transaction, you must be very careful and see who is actually the one who is responsible? Because a lot of times you buy things from sites, for example. And the one that provides you the legal guarantee is not the one that's selling you the product uh, because they resell the product. And a lot of times uh, you have to go to their original. For example, let's say I buy a computer and I buy them from, I don't know, an online shop. But if the computer, something happens to it, I have to go to the original company. I have to go to Acer and fix it. And not the company that I bought it. This is, this is a huge difference. And it's a huge difference, especially, for example, if the, the closest Acer shop to me is 
in Athens, for example, or it is in another country, you have to be very careful when you buy a product to check it online. Who is the one who gives you uh, the guarantee? Okay. So we who must ah this is this is one uh, we answered that uh, who must prove the defectiveness of the product and with what period of time? Does anyone remember that? We just told it. If anyone wants to answer it, otherwise I can tell it. So it's um, it's one year, okay? It's like like we said. In one year, the seller is a possibility to prove it. After one year, the consumer is obliged to prove the defect. One year benefits the consumer. Two years benefits somehow the, the seller. Okay. So, uh, can the consumer take legal action against the importer or any intermediary? up to the producer? The answer is yes, but only if the importer or producer provides their own commercial guarantees. The example we said earlier on, because there are some sites that give you extra commercial guarantee. There are some sites that don't give you any guarantee. So you have to be very careful, especially in online buying, who is the one who actually gives you the guarantee. Uh, also, if there is no solution between the seller and the consumer, Okay, you have a problem, but the seller doesn't help you. What is the time limit for the consumer to apply to civil courts? So the limitation period is two years, two years from the delivery of the goods, unless a suspension of legal limitation periods applied. So unless there are special rules, in two years you can go to court and ask for your money if you can uh, figure it out the, with the with the seller. Uh, Give me a second to check what I want to. Uh, ah, this is as well we told, but it's very important. Must the guarantee be provided in writing? So the trader must provide the guarantee in writing or on another durable medium available and accessible to the consumer. This is one of the things that I said here is very important. You have to have your guarantee either on email. On email or in writing, okay, to, to have all your rights. It's very important. Also, another common question, does the product being replaced or repaired carry new warranty? So you bought a computer, your computer is uh, flawed, you get a new computer after five months. How is the period? It's, it's the same, it's the two years from the beginning. It's a new period. So in case of replacement of the product, or its spare part within the time of the commercial or legal guarantee, the guarantee is automatically renewed for its entire duration with respect to the new product or spare part, unless something different is defined. Okay, so even the commercial one, it's extended if you find something. So let's say we bought it January, we find the, the flood in February, you get it on March, from March, new period of commercial guarantee. Okay. Uh, ah, oh, so this is very common one. What kind of information must be given in the commercial guarantee? This is um, this is also um, to the question we had earlier about the, the online ones. Um, we, you have to have at, at least some things. Some things that you must have is the guarantee must include and this is about the rights as well. It's some basic stuff that they have to have in like one or two pages. The guarantee must include with simple wording in the Greek language, in the Greek, if you're Greek, if you're Spanish, in, uh, in your own language, in French, in English, in your native language, at least the name and address, address of the guarantor, the, the one who provides the guarantee, the product to which the guarantee refers, which is the product that we have guarantee, its exact content, its duration, and its territory validity. validity. Dilladi, um, basically, can you change the product in all countries? Can you change it only in Greece? You can change it for how many years? Uh, for two years, for three years, because some companies might give you a, a more, um, they have like a policy 
you know, to for extending, for example, the losses two years, but they give you three years because you know they're a big company going to show off, let's say. Uh, also, a very common question: the fridge I bought broke down. The fridge can be whatever under the trade warranty, and they're taking too long to repair it. So you have the flow product, and they take too long. How much is too long? Where the law says to us, when the repair time for the product under commercial warranty extends 15 business day, business day, you are entitled to request a temporary replacement of the product for as long as the repair takes. So 15 business days, so no holidays, no Sundays, okay? 15 days, if they don't deliver it to 15 days, they have to give you a replacement until they give you the original product. Okay. Um, what other is important to tell you? Give me a moment. Ah, yeah, this is very common as well, and very helpful. I persuaded a mobile phone device. It broke down and the company says they don't have a part to give me. Producers and sellers of new consumer durables must ensure spare parts and technical support for a period of at least two years from the delivery of the good. So example, if you bought a phone from, from Apple and they said to you, oh, this model is too old now, we can give you a spare part. In the two years you bought it from the store, they have to have spare parts in it to give to you. Okay, two years, not too long, but at least it's something. Uh, ah, also in the in the native language um, we said, for example, there are a lot of people say I bought an electrical device and it does not have instructions for use in my own language. I see it a lot of time. Um, there are products that don't have your native language in. Okay, so some cases it's okay to happen and some cases it's not. So the producer must provide the consumer with a product in, in, in his native language uh, or with internationally uh, established symbols in writing um, or example, in a, or in 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 a, in a email with complete and clear instructions about the maintenance, about the usage, and the only products are uh, excluded from this, so they don't have to have your own native language, uh, are the ones. Um, that are very, very easy to understand. Or for example, uh, it might be a food, okay? If a product is very basic to understand, like it has one function and um, everyone can understand it, it doesn't need to have your native language. It might have only established symbols. For example, uh, you can use it if you are over three, which is a plus three, and not have something on Greek, okay? Or on Spanish or whatever language. But all the other products that are not very simple, you have to have them in your own native language. Otherwise, um, there is a problem. <laughs> you can return them. You can ask about the, um, the seller to, to change it because it, it, they should not sell it. So these things about what we said now, I think you will have understand about the legal guarantee and about commercial guarantee when we have them. So now we can focus more on the sales we told. So the sales that are distant, the sales that are from door to door, and the sales um, from the store. So for example, some sales from door to door. Uh, give me a second. Yeah. I think this one you can, if someone wants to answer it, it's very easy, we, we told it. I bought a product worth 15 euros outside of a commercial store, outside of a commercial store. And I want to withdraw. Do I have this right? Does anyone remember? You can or can answer it. It's 
very easy. It's the one we told earlier on. It's okay. So 15 euros, what we said for off premise contracts, the consumer can return things that cost less than 30 euros. Less than 30 euros, you can return. Okay. So, uh, ah, this happens all the time in Greece. I bought two books from a bookseller who visited me at my house. When he left, I thought about it again and I don't really need them. I have also given a small advance. Can I return them? So, the consumer has the right to withdraw from the non-commercial contract without reason within 14 calendar days of receipt of the product. Like we said, during the above period, the collection of an advance payment by the selling company is prohibited. So in the 14 days, the law says you can take an advance of money. Also, if the consumer has not been informed of the right of withdrawal, that usually happens since from sale to door to door, the withdrawal period is extended by 12 months, like we said earlier on, or 14 days from the date of notification. So if someone says something to your, your door and don't, don't tell you that you have 14 calendar days to withdraw, then the period comes 12 months. And if they, what will happen is you want to return it. And after that, they will inform you that you had 14 days, but actually that 14 days counts from the moment she actually to told you later on. Also, the consumer's declaration of withdrawal must be made in writing or on another durable medium. So you, if you do a withdrawal, from the law perspective, you, you want to see it. So, so in online um, uh, sales, usually good companies have a, a form ready for you if you want to withdraw. And if you just look in a site, for example, you see they have a department that says um, a little tick that says that withdraw or paper, and if you click it, they have a paper that it's either the one that is basic from the law or a custom one that you have, you can uh, for, um, write it down and send it to them by email. So you have it on, um, on a durable medium. It's very important. And if you do that on a store, so you want to go and say it's a product, it's very important if you go to a store to have it in writing and to have a copy of it, okay? It's very important because if something happens, it says the company, ah, I didn't take it. Nobody gives it to me. You have proof with date, with signatures, with everything. You, if you do that, you won't have any problem. But if you don't do that, it's, it's a bit difficult to prove it. That's a problem. Because the consumer bears, bears the burden of proof that he has exercised the right of withdrawal. You have to prove it. The seller, on the other hand, must return the money within 14 days from the day on which he was informed of the consumer's decision to, to withdraw from the contract. So, ah, the same included, I bought DVDs from a salesman who came to my house. Then I saw that they have nothing to do with what he described to me. Can I return them? So, the right of withdrawal does not apply in the case of the supply of sealed audio recordings or sealed video recordings or sealed computer software which were unsealed after delivery. So for example, even if someone goes to the beach and sells you a DVD that is closed and you take it and then decide there is nothing or there is something completely different from what you bought, you can return it because you unseal it. It's the one thing we told earlier on that because the product the negative of you doing something wrong from buying something is too big for the consumer to be protected. So you, like I said earlier, if you buy a software from um, Microsoft for a word and you use it and then they lose it, it's too big and balance for the law to protect it. Okay. Uh, ah, uh, this is very, so we said that we have the 14 days cancellation. But we said also that not all products have that 14 days. If you take it from a store, 
you don't have it without reason, but there are some things that from, um, from the definition doesn't have a withdrawal period. So excluded from this, among other things, are products uh, that are manufacturing, manufactured according, give me a second, according to the consumer's specifications. So if you order a curtain for your window and you wanted to have these specific symbols, and you want it to be this height and this length, and you order it and you get it, but it's not like you wanted it. You can return it because the supplier made that thing exactly for you. If you're not happy with the product, there is no withdrawal period. For example, though, if it has a big hole, then you can go with your legal guarantee, but but you can go with the right of withdrawal for the 14 days because you asked for this product to, to be constructed, especially for you. Okay. Also, what other products are excluded? Products that can be damaged or expire soon, foods. Okay. Products that are not suitable for a return for health protection or hygiene reasons, underwear. Usually you can return underwear if you do for them. As long as they are sealed and unsealed after delivery. Okay, if you pick it and it's on a cellophane or something and you open it, then you can return it. Uh, ah, the supply of digital content, like we saw, told uh, earlier on. Let me see if there is something very important for this to tell you. I think there was one or two more examples I wanted to tell you from this. Give me a second. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, also, you are not considered a consumer when you get healthcare services wherever or not provided through health facilities. Doesn't matter. Uh, uh, give me a second, everyone. Give me a second. I have to pause for a second. You can also take a five to ten minutes break if you want, and we'll be back. Okay. I know we have a break, I just saw a question. Um, I don't know if the person is here, I can repeat it afterwards as well, but the question was, if you buy something from a door-to-door -door sale, how do you prove if they have informed you or not? Uh, that's why I said that it's, it's, it benefits the consumers usually. So if you see it's, it's your word, because if you go to a court, you have to prove it. If they don't have a writing form or um, a paper that they don't usually have uh, and they say i form you and you said they don't inform you it's whenever the judge will believe and usually they will believe you as a consumer from door to door uh, something like that but um, if you want to be sure about they have to, to inform you um, they can either um, um, have a paper or uh, a motto or I don't know, something to put it, but it's more like um, it's 
it's um, your word against their word, usually what happens. Uh, if you hold it nice, if you don't, uh, I will uh, tell it again later on. Okay, so it's 12.5 in uh, 15, something like that, we'll return, okay? Okay, Vimdra will tell us when he when she is back if she didn't hear the question. Uh, also, everyone can ask questions. Especially Sorry, about... I just uh, logged in again. Have you heard your uh, your answer from your question? Um, no, I didn't. Sorry. Ah, okay. So you ask if you buy something from a door to door sale, how do you uh, prove if they have informed you or not? So basically, because from door to door, it's difficult to have a, a writing a paper or something like that. It's uh, more you will go to court. So if, if you have this problem, because if they say we can we can return it, or we have informed you about the 14 days and they didn't, um, you will usually go to court and your word against their word. So the mm -hmm. judge will, will uh, define that, but usually it's uh, to the benefit of the consu consumer, especially if it's a more shady business. Uh, yeah, what we said is that when someone sells you something door to door, uh, they didn't inform you about the warranty or they didn't inform you about the, um, the 14 days uh, you need to um, uh, cancel any product without any reason. Uh, and they don't tell you something. And they said, you, you say that. They didn't inform me. And they say, we inform you. So the solution here is that you will have to go to court. And when we have to go to court, that means that it's your word against their word. So the judge will see uh, what business they have, who they are, are they something, uh, a huge company? They usually inform people. And uh, if they are not that kind of company, um, would, they wouldn't be normally to sell you door-to-door -door products. They will give you the benefit that you weren't informed. But usually it's, it's your word against their word in court because from door-to-door -door they will never give you a paper of we have informed you about these rights. Uh, are you okay now? Do you understand it? I hope you all are, are good. If you want to ask something again, ask me. There is no problem for me answering. Or if you have any questions about the things we have said until now, uh, when you're a consumer, when you're a producer, when you're a seller, when... Um, 
and you can cancel um, your uh, order or the about the 14 days about the legal guarantee about the um commercial guarantee if you have something that is a bit foggy on your mind ask me because i i would like to in your personal life if you want to exercise your right to do that it's very helpful because a lot of times uh, people um they all oh, how can i do that it's very difficult it take me so much time and i will go to court you don't usually have to go to court it's the last the last thing but you have to know your rights so you can force the people to give you what you need or what you can get from them okay any other questions i would be happy to answer so uh, we were talking about exceptions okay exceptions about um, uh, your right uh, to withdraw we said healthcare services okay gambling activities which include games of chance in which the players bet money, lotteries, casino games, betting transactions online, you can withdraw from them, okay? Social services as well, relating to social housing, child care and support for families and people. Um, uh, what there's, um, there are a lot of things, I'm not telling you all, uh, it's in the regulation, I'm just trying to find the most um, important ones and, and tell you. Passenger transport services, you can either from them, or supply of food, drinks, or other goods intended for current consumption of the household, because this product, imagine if you took a, a mango and you withdrew the mango for 14 days, it will be rotten. There is no chance you can do that, okay. Um, what is, I think I wanted to say one more thing that was important. Give me a second. Um, ah, yeah, and um, organized trips and organized holidays in tours. You can you can withdraw from them as well. Okay, if you bought it, you bought it. So right here we have. Um, is there something else you can help you with? Uh, give me a second. Ah, the one we saw the earlier on. The exemptions are that. Okay, continuing on the door-to-door -door, um, sales, because I think some of you have some questions. For example, let's say this. I bought an encyclopedia and changed my mind. The seller gave me a subscriber card and says returns are not accepted. So this one tells me that they can, you can return it. And now he's asking me 260 euros to pay for the product. What can I do? So if the supplier does not comply with the informations, information obligations provided by the European regulation, the non-commercial contract is void in favor of the consumer, like I told you before. The supplier is required to provide the consumer with, among other things, listen here, is required. Doesn't matter if when, you come, when she comes to your door, he don't, if she don't do that. He's required to provide the consumer with, among other things, information about his identity, geographical address and telephone number, the main characteristics of the product you persuaded, the price, payment and pay, uh, delivery arrangements, and the existence of the right of withdrawal, as well as and the conditions, deadline, and procedures for exercising. You see here, procedures for exercising. He has to say that. If he doesn't say that, the contract is void in favor of the consumer. That's, so if you have to go to court, for example, the, the judge usually will be in favor of you. There has to be some evidence that he informed you otherwise but they will not exist. And they and if um, proof against you doesn't exist, the judge usually um, have his opinion in favor of the consumer. Okay. Uh, give me a second. So we clear door to door. Okay, we can say some examples for, for the distance, for the first one we said, okay. Uh, so, 
I bought a product advertised by a company on television over the phone. Remember, the, I don't know if you remember the distance we said um, consumer, supplier, they have to be not in physical touch until they conclude the contract. Okay. So here, I bought a product adver advertised by a company on television over the phone. Is the transaction of mine a distance contract? Yes, because it was concluded within the framework of an organized system of distance sales with the exclusive me use of means of distant communication. We said telephone, email, and without the simultaneously physical presence of the supplier and the consumer. This is the perfect example to understand when you have a distant um, contract. Over the phone, not simultaneously physical presence, and you talk with a means of distant communication. Okay, another one. I made an online purchase and want to return the product. The seller refuses because it's not defective. This is also a very important and very common one to understand. So online purchase, not from a shop, you didn't go physically there. And the seller says the product is fine. And it is fine. Okay, it is fine. The product, the seller doesn't lie. The product is fine. We have to understand the consumer has the right to withdraw from distant contracts without any reason within 14 calendar dates of receipt of the product, of receipt, okay? If the right of withdrawal is not recognized by the seller, you can always file a complaint to your local um, consumer protection uh, 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 directorate. And after that, you can go to court. But the important thing here is distant, okay? 14 calendar days without any reason, any reason, okay? From the day you took your receipt. So we hold the receipts. We don't throw them away. We hold them, okay? Also, this is a, a good one. Uh, I purchased I pers a mobile phone online. Okay. And why I'll return the product intact? I'm not refunded because I unsealed the package. They, stay, they state that they have also mentioned, mentioned it in the terms of use of their online store. Is it legal? This is a very nice example. So they say they have an online store, they have a special page, they have all the terms and conditions, and, and within, within one of them, they included that if you, if you unseal the package, you can withdraw. So let's see what the law has to say about it. Online stores are required to inform consumers, among other things, of the right to withdraw from a distant contract according to the latest regulation. The conditions uh, for, for, for anyone uh, from Greece is the 2,251 um, and 94 law, if you want to check it. The conditions, the deadline, second, yeah. And the procedures for exercising it without imposing additional restrictions not provided by the legislation, such as not unsealing the package. If the right of withdrawal is not recognized by the seller, you can file a complaint with the general direction of consumer protection. So if the law about the specific product doesn't say that if you unseal it, you lose your right to withdraw, like we said with DVDs, like we said with a digital product, it's a different product, okay? Because it didn't say, it says a mobile phone online, not a digital product. They can put any terms they want. So this guy was selling mobile phones. They put it in a package. And they said, if you unseal the package, you lose your right to withdraw. No. They, 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 okay. They, don't, they can sell a right whatever they want. They have to be specific with the law. Also, it is pointed out that if the consumer has managed 
Give me a second here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if the consumer had managed the goods other than that which is necessary to establish the nature, characteristics, and function of the goods, then he bears the responsibility for any reduction in their value and the supplier can fund him an amount less from the persuades amount. So if you took the mobile phone, open it, see it has everything in, but continue to using it, or uh, it, it fell from your hands to the floor and it has scratches. This is something that a normal consumer wouldn't do. So a normal consumer would open it, which would open the device, would open the ceiling they have, they would plug it in, they see, oh, it's normal, the battery is normal, the photo camera is normal, that will be the end. If you overuse it, or if, it, if you throw it down, or if water comes to it, then the seller has the right to give you less money or not at all, okay? So, and now, what is very important here is how the consumer can exercise his right of withdrawal, okay? Uh, it's very important, like I said, uh, you have to have proof, okay? The consumer declaration of withdrawal must be in writing or another durable medium. I say, I say here to you, durable medium a lot of times. Usually durable medium is an e email by the law, but I will give you the definition here, so uh, maybe it helps you a bit more. A durable medium is any instrument which enables the recipient to store information addressed personally to him in a way accessible for future reference for a period of time adequate for the purposes of the information. So if your guarantee is for three years, you have to have this thing in a, um, in a, um, uh, in a durable medium for at least that period of time. Okay, it must be possible. For example, you can write it in a paper that dissolves in one year, or if it's not a good paper, or it's a toilet paper, you can't write it on toilet paper, you have to write it on normal paper. So at least for three years, you can see it. Okay, and um, yeah, so this is a durable medium. Any instrument with information addressed personally to the consumer and that can hold that information for a period of time. Okay, so now we know what durable medium is. And we continue from the, the right of withdraw. So the consumer declaration of withdraw must be made in writing or in another durable medium, as we said, as the burden of proving that he has exercised that right is borne by him. So if you go to court, you will have to prove that you did the withdraw. You need to have the paper, not only to give him to him, but to have one for you as well, okay? The consumer can use the sample withdrawal form or make any other clear statement about his decision to withdraw from a given contract. So the law itself, in the end of the regulation and in every national law, there is a pre-made um, um, withdrawal or withdrawal um, paper that have the specific information. And usually companies use it uh, and put it on their websites so you can write all their um, uh, information there. But not only, you don't need to fill that paper. Uh, you can also, in any white paper, say, I, your name, your information, uh, whatever other information is important on your ID, want from that product that I bought that day with this receipt to withdraw from and you sign and you make the photocopy and you give it to the company. This as well is okay to use as a right of, of withdrawal, but you have to have the papers, okay? And to give them. The consumer has the right to withdraw without reasons, like we said, only from distant contract within 14 calendar days of receiving the product. If the consumer is not informed of the right of withdrawal, the withdrawal period is extended by 12 months or so. And we said again that 
that, you, that the fact that you haven't been informed, you have to prove it. It's your goal against theirs. But it usually benefits the consumer. Or if there is information in the meantime, by the 14 days from the day on the information. So 14 days, if you haven't been informed, um, 12 months, and from the 12 months, after you get informed, they break. So you get informed in the sixth month, you have 14 days from the sixth month later on. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's something important for distance to tell you as well before we move on. Ah, uh, this one I told you earlier on. During the process of submitting my order online, it was not clear that submitting the order entails my obligations to pay. In this case, do I have the right to cancel my transaction? Transaction? Yes. Because my supplier must ensure that the consumer, by submitting his order, expressly acknowledges that the order entails an obligation to pay. If he does not comply with this, the consumer is not bound by the contract or the order. There was a case in the European nation not a long time ago where someone was booking um, a house for vacations from booking and uh, they asked him for all the details from his card and everything. And he pressed the button and he didn't understand that uh, it was some years before, it's not like booking now. And uh, he did not understand that by pressing the button that he booked the room. He thought that, okay, they asked me my credit card numbers. I continue from here to see more uh, information about the room. And um, the instant he pressed the button, he paid. And they asked him, no, no, not only that, they asked him um, um, a deposit. And there was a huge court case that took some years. And that was when they implicated the decision that when the consumer pays a button, uh, press a button that gives money, basically, you have to be 110% sure that when you press that button, you pay. They have to tell you specifically, you pay here. This is payment. Okay, this is, um, this is because a lot of companies um, nowadays, they make it very explicit so you can understand it. And it wasn't like that before. And that's why I uh, tell you this thing a lot of times. Ah, also the product I tell you earlier, this is very important. It's a very good example to understand. I bought curtains online. They didn't have the measurements I wanted. And I gave them specific dimensions. Can I withdraw? Because we said from distant uh, contracts, you can withdraw within the 14 days whenever you want. But if you gave them specific dimensions or um, um, requirements for the curtains, you can't withdraw. Okay. Goods manufactured to the consumer's specifications or clear, cl clearly personalized are excluded from the right of withdrawal. Okay. Uh, ah, this is as well because someone asked me earlier on if I buy something um, for my company. Okay. I pursued a device remotely with an invoice on behalf of my business. Can I withdraw? No, because you are not a consumer. A consumer is defined as any natural person who acts for reasons that do not fall under his commercial, business, craft, or independent professional activity. If you have these reasons, you're not a consumer. You don't have any of the rights we we're talking about all this time. Okay. Also, I bought a product from a private press, private person, not a company. Okay. It's someone and he sold me something. He's not a salesman. He doesn't do that as a job. Can I file a complaint? Can I withdraw? No, because the general di the <clears throat> director of consumer protection does not deal with complaints if the supplier does not act for purposes related to his commercial, industrial, or professional activity. So both of you must have this. So consumer, natural, not for his business. Supplier, natural or legal, governed or not governed, for his business, for his industry, for his professional activities. Then you have protection from consumer law. Okay.
Also, this is very typical. If I, you bought the product outside the European Union, the European Union laws for protection does not apply to you. Okay. If the country, though, as well, participates in a consumer action, it's called the um, International Consumer Protection uh, Law Enforcement Network, ICPN, you can submit your complaint for international support. But what you have to remember is if you buy a product out of the European nation, these laws we talk about here does not apply for you, different laws, okay? Another good thing, I have ordered furniture from a store and paid for it from a store, okay? Although it has been 45 days since the order, it has not been delivered and I have no update on when it will be delivered. What can I do? Okay. This we didn't uh, told you yet. It's a very nice example to remember. Unless otherwise agreed, the supplier delivers the goods within 30 calendar days, 30 calendar days from the conclusion of the contract. If he does not deliver them on time, the consumer must ask him to deliver within an additional period um, with the circumstances. If this is not observed, the consumer is entitled to terminate the contract and the supplier must return without delay all money paid under the contract. For example, especially on COVID, a lot of companies could not, could not deliver in 30 calendar days, but because the situation was so extreme, the additional period of time extended to a lot of days. Usually, when you don't have COVID, for example, they have to give you the, the product unless they specifically say, you know, this product is limited and uh, we need two months to make it or, okay, this is a different case. I'm talking about normal products. You have 30 days. They have, they have 30 days to bring it to you. If they don't bring it to you, you can give them like five more days, maybe a week. And if they don't give it to you again, uh, they have to return your money. Okay. Also, uh, another good question. I ordered a device online at a certain price. Certain price. They didn't say the, send it to me because as they told me, there was a mistake in the price. Is that legal? Quite common question, I think. I have seen it again. Let's see. Indicating an incorrect price and in general, any provision of incorrect or inaccurate information that may mislead the average consumer and lead him to make a transaction decision that would not otherwise have made is considered a misleading commercial practice. Um, so in consumer law as well, they, we have what they call blacklists, blacklist, and uh, they have also misleading commercial practice. Blacklist um, is a, 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 some practices that by the European nation has been decided that companies cannot use, it's prohibited to use, and uh, there are some practices from them that uh, become misleading commercial practice so the basically they mislead the consumers to take an action. About this example, what is very important to understand, it says here, they may mislead the average consumer. So if you go and buy a computer that normally costs 2000 euros and you see the price of uh, 200, let's say, it might be misleading. It will be debated by the court, but if you pay a computer that normally costs 2,000 euros for 20 euros, then this is not misleading for the average consumer. It means that the difference in price is not that huge for the product you get. For example, buying an electronic computer of 2,020 for 20 euros, it's not normal, okay? It has to be misleading for the average consumer. The, the, the prices must be kind of close or not be um, totally uh, two euros or 20 euros for a computer, for example, okay? Also, uh, a company emailed me about a very good offer they have they having these days on a product, advertisement, so. I went to three of their branches, but it was nowhere available. Is it legal? 
the company should supply the product or its equivalent in reasonable quantities, considering the product, its advertising scale, and the price offered. So they can have, for example, 10 products in sale, 10 computers, and they go to uh, 1 million people emails and they said, you know, you have this very good product on sale. They have to be corresponding. For example, they have to have at least 200,000 pieces. It has to be corresponding. Because otherwise, you bait the people to come to your shop to buy something that is not here in the thought that, oh, they might buy something else. Okay, this is as well prohibited by the law. Um, ah, yeah. In the same context we had earlier on about the days, I ordered the product online and that was marked immediately available. However, it has not been delivered to me for 10 days. And they told me that they do not know when they will deliver to me. And they are waiting for an update from the supplier. Is it legal? The provision of the correct or inaccurate information that may mislead the average consumer and lead him to make a transaction decision that he would not otherwise have made because it is a misleading commercial practice and is prohibited by the latest regulation. Inaccurate information may concern the availability and delivery time of the product or other matters. For example, the origin of the product, if it's false, its specifications, if, for example, I buy a computer with a specific uh, graphics card and it's wrong, it's a different graphic card, the characteristics of the supplier and its commitments to the consumers. So if it says immediately, two, three days. Okay. 10 days, you can do that. If you say this computer has uh, the latest, uh, I don't know, Ryzen 7 uh, series, it has to have the Ryzen 7 series. So with that said, I think you should have a basic understanding from the things we tell about now and be okay with them. I want to analyze a bit more uh, give me a second. So, yes. And then the applications from the consumer. Ah, okay, yeah. So, uh, we have the results of the right of cancellation. Okay. And we have obligations both on the part of the supplier and both on the part of the consumer. So, we have the supplier. If we have a form like that, we have to refund any payment received including delivery changes within 14 calendar days from the day he was informed of the consumer's decision to withdraw. You have to refund the same with the same means of payment because bank, bank, it was cash, cash. And ad additional delivery costs, if the consumer has not chosen the cheapest standard delivery method, is paid by the consumer. So if the, for example, the supplier gives you with a specific um, company, but you know, it takes four to five more days and you want to deliver your product very quick and you take an express company. Uh, and in the end, you didn't like the product. So you would draw. The, consume, the supplier will not pay for the extra money you gave for the product to come um, sooner. Okay. He pays only what he supposed to have paid if you took the product exactly like it was meant. Uh, also, the consumer now, like we said, you can return the goods within 14 calendar days from the day on which he notifies the supplier of his decision to withdraw. So you make the form, the right form, you give it to the supplier, and then within the 14 days, you send the product back. Okay. Only the direct cost of returning the goods is charged, and you're also responsible for any reduction in the value of the goods only as a result of the handling of goods other than which is necessary to establish the nature. So if you took any actions above what the, the regular consumer would do, and the product has a minus on its value because of that, you are entitled to that. You have to pay that amount. Okay. The consumer is not burdened for the provision of services during the withdrawal period, provided that the supplier has failed to provide the information required by law or the consumer did not give his prior express consent to begin performance of the contract during the withdrawal period. 
So we have the right to cancellation. Ah, yeah. Also, like we said earlier on, sample withdrawal form, you have to have it. Clear statement. The consumer must send the form within the deadline, the 14 days. Can when you have an electronic submission, you have to have it on the supplier's website. And the consumer always bears the, the burden of proof that he exercises it right. Like we said earlier on, we have to keep the paper and everything. Okay. If the supplier has not provided the information, 12 months, and from the day he notified you, 14 days. This is things we told. Uh, ah, phone calls. Okay. At the beginning of the conversation, the caller has to state his identity and the commercial purpose of the communication. The supplier is obliged to confirm his offer to the consumer. And this is the most important part. Is the consumer is bound only when he signs the offer or he has sent his right and consent. If the company calls you uh, from telephone, a uh, telephone company, let's say, and they tell you, we have this uh, wonderful contract, uh, you will pay less money, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, do you want it? Uh, you say yes. And they don't say your paper, they don't say your contract, you don't say anything. And after a month, they send you a bill. Oh, you have to pay, but you agreed. No, doesn't matter what you say on the phone. The moment they see you agree, they have to send you the contract and you have to sign it. And they have, they, they need to have it and you need to have it. If you don't sign it, no matter what you say on the phone, you're not obliged to pay any bill. Okay, this is very important because a lot of people have trouble with it. The supplier also must provide the consumer with confirmation of the concluded contract, again, on a fixed medium, uh, like, uh, like we said. And if the supplier does not comply with the standard requirements, contract is void in favor of the consumer. Very nice as well here. We told that as well. Uh, I think we have time as well to, to tell some things about the new law. Uh, give me a second to be sure I didn't forget anything to tell you. Ah, yeah, and this is typical, but just the, the, the supplier has to tell some things to the consumer before. Geographical address, identity of the supplier, main characteristics of the goods, the total price of goods you were going to pay, the withdrawal, um, um, the withdrawal ability you have, uh, the conditions of it, the deadline of it, any agreements for payment, any, any, any of this information. The, the, I think in the PowerPoint and the Google, I have them all to you. It's like 20 of them. And you can see them. There are a lot of things they have to inform you of. And if they don't inform you for any of these reasons, the contract is void. Okay, it's very important. It's to the benefit of the consumer. So, uh, in the end here, so we have everything you need to know about consumer protection law. So um, the latest regulation here um, and the latest law in Greece, we, the latest law in Greece for everyone from Greece is 4,933 of 2022. Uh, the latest regulation is, let me, for everyone in Europe, is the 2019-771-EK, okay, on consumer rights, you will find it here. Uh, they took a lot of measures to protect consumers from the risk of digital, specific digital transactions, while enhancing the transparency of online markets, for example, Amazon. New legislation is coming to increase, to increase consumer safety in the digital space. Consumer protection in digital transactions has been an increased need as this is an area with an increased risk of manipulation. Some important changes brought by the new legislation are this legislation uh, locally happened 2022 and in most countries uh, in their national law should be in 2022. So it's very recent, okay. Uh, we have a completion of the blacklist which I told earlier with cases such as ranking by search engines without informing the consumer if the ranking is the result of paid advertising or due to the payment of price. What do you mean by that? You go in Google and you search a word. 
the, the list you, you see the, um, the results is very important for the consumer. What the companies used to do until now is they could pay money or uh, advertise, or they were advertising um, a page and they didn't write, write, write like now, if you go and Google something and it's an ad, you will say advertising, you will see it. Before 2022, they didn't write it, it's very... So there was an advertising page and as the first result of Google and they didn't tell you it's an advertise or they paid the money to put it on. But nowadays they can do that, okay? This is one big change of the, the new law. Uh, or also the submission of false evaluations or positive reviews by virtual consumers, influencers, bots, in order to promote products was considered an unfair commercial practice, was blacklisted and banned. If it's someone catches now using bots to make false reviews or they pay an influencer and the influencer doesn't say they get paid or the company doesn't say they paid him, to advertise a product, there will be huge fines. And because the fines as well, and the sanctions, um, according to, to the law, increased very big amount. So they must be very careful. In addition, the failure to inform the consumer before the conclusion of the contract about whenever the third party offering a product is a supplier, this is all for online, okay? Is a supplier or a private individual is now considered as well an unfair commercial practice. Yet he must end the, uh, what, sorry, uh, why this is uh, interesting to us? Because if he's a private person, there is no 14 day right of withdraw. So if you buy something online, and it's like we said earlier, it's not a company, it's not someone who sells for his commercial, for his business, there's no protection for commercial law. And there were a lot of sites where they were saying things and they, they, it wasn't clear that the person you were buying something um, was not a company, was not uh, someone who does that for a living. So you bought something from another, another natural person and you didn't have any rights. So this is bad as well. And the last thing is that digital contracts where the consumer provides their personal data in return for using a platform, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, are explicitly defined. Now, on these platforms, the consumer is given the right to withdraw without reason within 14 days while demanding the deletion of his data. You can even withdraw from Facebook now because Facebook didn't use to sell you, we take the data and we sell it because it's a free app and we take something from you. And nowadays they can do that. And you can withdraw from, the, from having your profile and they have to delete every data on it. Uh, I think this is uh, the conclusion. I don't know if you have any questions, anything I can uh, answer you, I can help you with uh, to understand. Anyone something, uh, any question or something? If you want anything to ask about uh, consumer protection, online products. Otherwise, uh, let me check if I have four minutes if I have something else to say to you. Ah, yeah, I have that as well, as long as you don't have any questions. Uh, yeah, in the three minutes we have left, I will just quickly say you about something about digital service, very quick. Uh, so there was definition of digital service in this year past uh, because one of the main problem is that um, all the online payments need to be defined and you have a clear law to exercise your rights. So what is digital service? Digital service is a service that allows the consumer to create, process, store data in a digital format and have access on them. It's a service that allows the exchange of data in digital form or any other interaction with such data, which is uploaded or created by the consumer. And from that, we have services. We have online marketplace, we have online market provider, we have uh, functionality, Functionality is defined. It's the ability of the digital content 
or digital service to perform their functions, bearing in mind their purpose. So, yes, and as well, I want to say you this. Now, goods with digital, this is very important, and I will close with that. Goods with digital elements means any tangled movable property that incorporates or is interconnected with digital content or a digital service in such a way that the absence of the digital content or digital service could prevent the goods from performing their function. And now to understand, an example of goods with digital elements is a smartphone which incorporates an application supplied under the sales contract, such as an alarm clock or a camera. Goods with digital elements are subject to the provisions on selling in the civil code. If there is doubt as to whenever the supply of incorporated or interconnected digital content or an intercorporated digital service forms part of the sales contract, the sale content or digital service shall be presumed to be covered by the sales contract. So if you buy a digital phone that has, for example, your phone has inside your alarm clock or a camera and this is defective, you're, you have exactly the same rights which is told earlier on. Okay. Uh, I think this is all. Uh, I hope you learned something today that you can use in your uh, private lives as well or in your um, jobs, maybe. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. And uh, you can find, give me a second, you can find, um, uh, you can contact any time with this uh, Erasmus from baggagemail.com or with me, it's uh, pavlos21 papakihotmail.com if you have any questions or something that can be helpful of you after that. Thank you very much, Pavlos. I hope and I guess everyone enjoyed the session. Uh, it was interesting to me as well. Uh, okay, so everyone, I have shared the link with the presentation in the chat. You can find it in Google Classroom. Uh, if anyone wants to ask something right now, you can raise your hand or you can contact us on Slack. Uh, via email, as Pablo said. Okay. I guess there aren't any questions, so thank you very much. And uh, Pablo, we will see you in the afternoon. <laughs> yes. Have a nice time, everyone. Bye-bye.